Alright, so in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how I took a regular swivel and rigid caster 10 inch pneumatic wheel and make it into a triple threat like this. So I'll show you what you need, how to do it. There's simple caster wheels that you get at Harbor Freight. You're a 10 inch swivel pneumatic caster. You saw the last video that I made with the toolbox, which is right here. Then you kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. So this wheel here is the regular rigid caster and these two are the added ones. I'm really excited about this. This is my design. This is something that I came up with. I have not seen it like this anywhere else. It's not a big deal. Anybody, I'm sure somebody already thought about it somewhere at some point. I just haven't seen it. For a relatively cheap price, you could do it too. So let's get it going and let's see what you could do. And if you could do one like this yourself, I would love to see it. Hopefully, somebody will like it out there in YouTube land and they could copy it and do it themselves and get a kick out of it. It's only going to cost you about 100 bucks or less. If you, if you use coupons and stuff, you could get it for definitely under 100 bucks. I think it's pretty cool so, looking. Let's get started. I'll show you what you need, how you do it, and the end result. Here's one of the triple ones right here. And it, to make this happen, what you're going to need is a set of casters, two swivel and two rigid, eight of these dolly wheels, 10 inch. And you'll notice the hub here is offset, and in here it's in, as opposed to just one of these regular ones where the hub is on both sides. So eight of these, gonna need to get two of these 5 eighths rods. These are 36 inches long, unless you could find one that's four foot. You're gonna need to make up four of these 10 inch long ones. And also it'd be nice to make up four of these five and a half inch long wide ones. You'll also need to get a 5 eighths drill bit. And this is gonna help out a lot. If you don't have a 5 eighths drill bit or you don't wanna spend $20, maybe you could use one of these. I used this grinder to um, drill out a few of them, but it took a lot of air to do it, and it took a lot of time. And actually, I got so sick of it, I pulled got the 20 bucks to buy the drill bit, 5 eighths. So that's something that you're gonna need to do there. Also, you'll need a handful, eight of these washers, 5 eighths by, I guess it's inch and a half. Let's take a look. One and three quarters, but it doesn't matter. Inch and a half is fine. As long as that's five eighths and it fits on there. You're also gonna to wanna to get some cotter pins. You really need eight. I have this assortment that I picked up from Harbor Freight, but the important thing is you don't want your wheel to fall off unless you have a better idea, a better way to do this. This is how I did it. Once you have all your pieces, or before you even have your pieces, just to give you an idea if you wanna tackle this project, we'll take this bolt out. This is what holds the wheel in itself. Here's the hub. And this is the part right here on this side of the, your um, the main part of the wheel, the caster that you're gonna have to drill out. This goes through five eighths. This is the part you have to drill out right there. This side. So you could do that with a drill, with a drill press, with a grinder. Doesn't matter. Just try to keep it tight. You don't want to go oversized and have and have your um, hole like this. You want to keep it as tight as possible. This is what the manufacturer has. I wouldn't go any more than that. I actually think that's too much. So another thing you're gonna have to watch out for is to make sure once you get this apart, it's gonna be helpful since you're modifying it. You're gonna wanna take this width right here and close this gap. You're gonna wanna pinch this to three and seven eighths. Now that is gonna be real helpful in the end. I think that way it keeps it tighter. I had problems before with the squeaking and so once you pinch this, you might need to use a clamp or put it in your vise. It's going to be a lot better. That's just for extra details, maybe TMI, but that's okay. So undo this. This one's already drilled out. You can see it goes through. So now you're going to go spend a little bit of money. Not a lot of people, including myself, have a lot of money. So you're thinking, do I really want to take my perfectly good wheels my good casters like this and modify them and make them into three wheels. Now what happens if you don't like it and you want to put it back? Well it's real simple because you're going to get two of the 36 inch pieces. You're going to have three of these out of one bar and you'll get another six inch piece. You'll take that six inch piece right here and you can cut it to five and a half inches. Check this out. This, so this way you could always go put it back to stock. Okay, now it's back to stock. All I did is cut a, um, the rod at five and a half inches, and I cut two holes. I put the I drilled the two holes in half of an inch from the end, so that way I have four and a half inches clear in between the hole. And now 
I have a modified, the, the metal for the caster itself, it's modified. I can go both ways, whether if I want to go three wheels or put it back to stock to your one single regular wheel. So that's in case anybody's debating, do they really want to destroy their wheels? Well, it's not really destroying it, you're customizing them. So that's going to be really helpful. So, to review what we're going to need, we're going to need to get four of these casters, two swivel and two rigid. You're going to need a handful of these 10 inch wheels, depending on how many wheels you want to add or what you're doing to it. You're going to need a handful of washers, one for each side. Also going to have to get some cotter pins, two 36 inch bars, 36 inches long by 5 8 and if, you do, if, you're, if you're using a different wheel other than the wheels that I have, just make sure that the bar that you're going to get, the um, thickness of it, is tight inside your hub for your rim. That's all. If it's half inch or if it's three quarters, just keep them all the same. So you might have to adjust. You might need a different drill bit. You might need a different grinder size. And so let's begin this project and we're going to go fast forward through the whole thing. And when we're done, we'll see how it looks and we'll play her in the dirt. Now when I built this cart, I videotaped the process of doing this, so I'm going to flip this over, I'm going to grease it because it squeaks. The darn thing squeaks and it's driving me nuts. And while I'm greasing that, I'm going to play the tape and you'll see how I made this. And I'll show you how you can make them too. So I'm going to roll the clip as I take this apart. You'll see how that works. and. I'm tired of these things squeaking and the reason why it squeaks is because this rod I didn't grease when it goes in the hole and especially the new hole that I drilled out just goes through there and as it turns it's squeak 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 so it's annoying it's not a big deal so let's get that going yes got to start working on the car all right so I'm going to flip it over first thing I'm going to do is take off the casters and cells now the bolt size, I forget exactly what it is. I think it's a 7 8 and a 5 8 wrench. Doesn't really matter, I guess. And since it's already connected to the card, I'm just going to unscrew it. I'll mark out where it goes. So it's, it'll, just, it'll go right back to where it's supposed to be. So in this situation, I'm going to use my drill press. Not everybody has a drill press. So it, it's not really necessary to have that. Go ahead and use a drill or a grinder. Now that piece of wood right there, I'm just using it as a block so it doesn't compress when I put the pressure on it to drill it out. Oh, look at that. It fits. <laughs> okay, so I'm marking out the axle. I'm going to cut that at 10 inches. And I'm going to use a sawzall, but obviously not everybody has a sawzall. If you don't have a sawzall, you could use a chop saw. And if you don't have a chop saw, Feel free to use a hacksaw. It's the easiest thing to use. Uh, I cut all mine at once. So one axle rod is 36 inches long. You'll get three 10 inch pieces and you'll, you're left with one six inch piece. The other piece that you buy if you're going to do all four wheels, you'll cut off 10 inches off that and then you'll do three more at six inches. So that way you can always put it back to stock. You don't have to do that. It's not necessary. Here I'm using the grinder, I'm just going to smooth out the edges, they're kind of rough. Now what I'm doing here is I'm pushing the axle through and before I drill any holes for the cotter pin, because that's what I'm setting up to do right now, I want to center up the axle and mark with a pencil where each one is so to kind of get a precise measurement. Now I'm switching over to a 1 8 of an inch drill bit, an eighth inch. That's what I'm going to use to drill out for the cotter pin hole.
So now that it's done, I'm gonna add some grease. See the little green dog? I'm gonna add some grease around there. Put it back together real quick. Lots of grease. Why not? Grease the shaft. And also you're gonna wanna make sure that you check all your tire pressure. Wanna make sure the pressure's up to about 30 pounds in each one before you like do your final assembly. And that's it, now I just put the cotter pin back in. Let's flip it over, check it out. No squeakage. That's awesome.